morning, Triumph Center. We're so glad that you are here with us today. I am so excited to worship with you. We have a new song starting right now called Great Things. Let's just stand together, put our hands together today, and worship together. Amen. Worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. I see what our Savior has done. I see how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great. You conquer the grave, you free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great.
thank you so much for meeting me here right now, God. Every time you meet me here, Lord. God, I just pray that you would just open up our hearts right now, Lord. That we would just be ready for what you have for us this week, what you have for us today, God. That we would be a vessel, Lord, for your light. That we would be active worshipers every day throughout this whole time, this unknown, this time of unknown, God. I thank you so much for everything you're doing, everything you're working. You're still working. You're still alive. Thank you so much for that, Lord. I bless your name. In Jesus' name we say, amen. Well, all right. What a beautiful time of worship this morning. We are so blessed to come into your homes this morning and it is a blessing to know that you're worshiping along with us, even though it's a little different times and a little different uh, uh, challenges. We are moving forward and God is doing great things and we're so blessed to be able to do that with you this morning. A few things that we wanted to make sure that you are aware of is number one is if you are in a small group make sure that you stay connected with your groups they are happening this week through all sorts of different uh, avenues of technology so make sure that you are connecting with your groups in this time of disconnection it's so uh, important to stay connected to uh, all of our church body and and our community in general and so we just want to make sure that you are doing that staying connected Second thing is, next week is Palm Sunday, and even though we won't be able to have our normal service, like normally, uh, the week before Easter here, we are going to be having a Palm service that will be exciting, and we're really uh, encouraged to be able to bring it to you, and, and please participate with us in that. Make sure and log on next week, same time. It's going to be a great uh, service to just lead up to Easter and the Holy Week. And the last area is we are going to be able to continue to take up our offering, even though we're not doing it in person. If you have the opportunity to give and you would like to give, you know that you can do that. You don't have to be here to be able to do that. You can give online. You can also uh, send in your uh, offering to the church here as well if you would like to do that. We want to take this opportunity to make sure that you know that we are not asking anything from you. We are All we are asking is that you ask God what it is that he would want you to give. And give that with a cheerful heart. I'm going to pray for the offering right now. And wherever you are, just ask that right now. Ask God to just, just impress on you and your heart what it is that he would want you to do. Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to give. Right now, God, I ask that you would just multiply everything that everyone is able to give this morning. Lord, that you would use it to make a difference in people's lives, to draw those that are far from you, close to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, and now, week four of Brand New. Welcome to, to Triumph Center as we 
endeavor to worship the Lord in this very, very special time and special way with the miracle of the modern technology that we have available to us. And I hope that you're having a wonderful morning, and I hope that your family's been able to worship together. This has been a beautiful spirit here for us today. We're just really enjoying the presence of God. Are you an overcomer? We sang about that, and it's the word of our testimony. You need to say, I am an overcomer. Why don't you just say that to yourself, and maybe look at people around you and say, listen, I am an overcomer, because there's something special about that, and that spoken word, that powerful word, when we give it out like that. You know, I was thinking today about the... We're talking about all kinds of different medicines that are needed because of what's going on in our culture and our nation today. But do you know the greatest medicine that we could have right now? It's found in the Bible. The Bible says a cheerful heart. A cheerful heart. Just, it's just, it, it just, it's, it's a cheerful spirit it just helps your heart to be glad before God and, and, and a joyful heart. And that's what we're after today. And I really want to bring something to you, a, a message that would help you. I believe that there's a lot of good things that we can bring today that can really help you understand where we are. Brand new, when you say that, immediately people start talking in terms of, well, well we know that when we become Christians that we're brand new in Christ. We're new creatures in Christ Jesus. But that's not the, really the direction of this series of messages. We're, we are new creatures in Christ Jesus. We understand that for sure. But we're talking about something that's higher than that, something that's wider than that, something that's deeper than that. We're talking about something that can affect your life and help you to get deeper into your relationship with Jesus Christ. See, I, I, I've asked myself many times recently, what is it about Christian church? What is it about Christian church that would cause men and women not to want to be a part why wouldn't they want to be a part when we are offering the greatest, really the greatest product ever known to man, which is eternal life? And when you think about not only that, but we're also promoting the greatest event ever known in, in the history of mankind, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, something that nobody has ever done before. And when you compound that with the fact that we are offering the greatest way of life that a person can ever have... In the fact that we're living, we can live a better life and you can be better at life through the Christian church. Then what would cause, what would cause us as a church to, to be, be resistible? What would cause men and women not to want to be a part of what we're doing here? See, I, I think that the church, we struggle right now. The church is struggling a little bit to keep pace with the, the, the rapid uh, population growth in our world. We're way past 7 billion people on the planet now. But beyond that, it's the numbers. It's the percentages. Are, is the Christian church staying in a proper percentage of being able to grow and, and gather, uh, harvest the souls of men and women? I, we're not doing as well as we could be doing, so is there something wrong? And you might ask yourself, so what's wrong? And I'm glad you asked that question. You asked it, right? Because I'm going to ask it for you. What's wrong? What would cause us for, for all this to happen? This, this fourth message that we're bringing to you in this call, series called Brand, Brand New is something that we've been, we've been looking for three weeks at, at what happened when Jesus, Jesus is God, who is a spirit, in the flesh. He comes to this earth to participate with mankind, to, to act out a, a, a series of principles and life before us so that we could know how we ought to live. That's basically all it was all about. Well, when, when we talk about Jesus in that, in that capacity, what Jesus was bringing to the world, he wasn't trying to take the Jewish religion and just add a layer to it. This wasn't supposed to be Judaism 2.0. It wasn't supposed to be uh, religious theology 201. When we talk about brand new, we need to get right up here, a paradigm shift. And that's what we're talking about today. A paradigm shift that the Lord was trying to impress upon us. There was going to be a whole new way of approaching God. It wasn't going to be through the old religious ways of you You have to have a, a sacred house and you have to have sacred people and sacred texts and you have to have, these were the, these were the elements of all forms of religion that we've, we had known up to that time. And the Lord's saying, no, I'm coming along and I'm going to do something different. I'm going to bring something different to you. There's going to be something wrapped up and it's going to be bundled up so powerful, so, so ma magnificent that it's going to change the shifting of, the, of, our, of our minds that we'll, we're going to approach life in a whole different manner, something brand new, brand new way of life, brand new approach to God. Three, 33 and a half years of being on the earth and now the Lord has resurrected from the dead and now he's ascended into heaven and I want you to understand that at, before he left, as he was leaving he said, I want you to be careful don't take what I've given to you these three and a half years of ministry don't take what I've given to you and try to put it back under a religious package that's not going to work 
Because what I've given to you is something new. Do you know that it's, it, what happened, what he warned about was exactly what happened. Barely 20 years after the Lord had already left, the Apostle Paul is going through a, an area that's now modern-day Turkey. It's a, it, was, it was called Galatia. And, and you've probably heard of the epistle to the book, of, uh, the book of Galatians. Well, Paul went through that area, and he established churches, Christian churches. And he told every one of them, now be careful, because you know, what, the, what we're trying to do for you is something absolutely new. Right after he left, some Judaizers, these were people that were Jews who came into the Christian church, but they then wanted to grab the Christian relationship and take it back and put it back under the Jewish religion. They thought this was the foundation and that the Christian religion was just an add-on. Well, that's not what Jesus wanted. That's not what Paul preached. So when he starts writing the book of Galatians, he's directly confronting what these people had tried to do inside these churches. In fact, if you can read through the, the, the gospel there, you're going to understand he was mad. He got mad about what was going on inside those churches. He says, it was freedom that Christ made you free. He's not wanting you to go back under the, the, the Jewish religion. See, uh, we, in, our, in our walk with God, every one of us in our walk with God, we have to understand that we come to a place where you have to boil everything down. The Jewish people had 630 laws. They had 10 commandments. They had ceremonial law. They had dietary law. They had all these things going on. It was nothing. Everything that they did was a heavy blanket on them. So that when, when Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I'm going to give you rest. He wasn't talking to sinners. He was talking to the Jewish people that had all this stuff on them. And they were laboring so heavily. So, heavily. so now Jesus comes along and, says, and Apostle Paul comes along and says, look, take everything that you've got, put it in a bucket, let's boil it down. And then he makes this statement that's so powerful. In Galatians chapter, chapter 5, verse 6, he says, the only thing that counts... When you boil it all down, the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Faith expressing itself through love. This was a, uh, I'm going to tell you something, this is a powerful concept, something that nobody had thought about before. But here's what happened. Within 30 years, Titus came in, destroyed the temple. The Jewish religion effectively got the nail in the coffin. Their, their religion re really was negated, basically, by, by way of force, by being the, the, the greatest force. And then after that, in 325 A.D., Constantine had just, he consolidated the two, the two sectors of the Roman Empire. He put them all together, and now he wanted to really d develop a big consensus in the church there, in, in, the, in the city of Rome, in the, in the country. And so he said, let's take the Christian church in here and add some paganism into it. And different one thing after another, these different elements. He, he's trying to draw from all different sectors of life so that everybody could be together and they could all be a big happy family. Well, this eventually became the universal church that became the worldwide church that became the dominating force of religion from that day forward. Now, what I would say to you today is that, um, that, that, that what happened was that now we had rules and regulations and rituals being added day by day. Men started adding their opinions and their interpretations of one thing after another. And now the Christian church had just as much rules and, and laws as the Jews had had 300 years earlier. And that was exactly what Jesus said, I don't want to have happen. I've come to give you something brand new. Now, from 325 A.D., for the next 1,200 years, up until the Protestant Reformation, the, the church, the church, the universal church, kept getting deeper and deeper and deeper, so deep into religion that finally Martin Luther, who was in the church and was one of the main guys in the church, he finally said, I've had enough of this. We're not supposed to live this way. We're supposed to live by faith. The just shall live by faith. And so he nailed 95 complaints he had against the church on the door of a church in Wittenberg, Germany. And he walked right across Catty Corner, right across the, the street, and he started his own Lutheran church that became the Lutheran religion. But you have to understand something. That when he did that, he took a lot of the, of the church, the church he was in, he took a lot of that church with him. So there still was a lot of rules and regulations. It was just refined a little bit. It had, just, it had been tempered a little bit. But it still was packed with rules and regulations. And look, 
You can, you can start for every one of you here, however you were raised, whatever denomination you were raised in. All of us probably were raised in some, some form of denomination. Every denomination has its little texts. It has its own little uh, bylaws, its own little way of doing it. And we say, okay, this is the way you're supposed to do it, and, and we're doing it right, so we're okay. And you're not doing it the same way, and so you're not as good as we are. And so we have all this inner fighting. In fact, when the Protestant Reformation started, you know what it ended up being? Christians were killing Christians in the name of, of Christ. How can this be? How can, how can the Christian church be, be brought to such a level that they couldn't understand that Jesus came to bring something new and it was wrapped around a heart full of love. A heart full of love. And that's what I want to bring to you here this morning because I think that the Lord wants to get a hold of us. Here's what, here's what happened. Jesus is on the earth and here comes a teacher. Here's what he says. The teacher says, Teacher, what is the, great, what's the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind, this is the first and great commandment. And he says, and the second is like it, that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. These two commandments, on these two commandments, hang all the prophets, all the law. In other words, let's reach back into the Jewish faith and take it all and hang it on those two commandments because that's exactly what Jesus is trying to bring to the world. Love God, love people. Simple, simplified. Four words. If you'll love God and love people and make that your desire of your heart, you're going to be okay. Don't add laws to it. Don't add rituals to it. Don't put regulations on it. Don't make it right and wrong and this and that, all the things that go along with that. For 300 years, it, it was going along that way that, that, that men were trying to do that rules and regulations, and it wasn't, it wasn't working. It wasn't what the Lord wanted us to do. Remember, the only thing is what he said. Paul said the only thing that counts is faith that expresses, expresses itself through love. I want, you to, I want us to, to bring this up to date now, to the day that we're living in, right now that we're living in. With our nation and our world and this cultural chaos that we're in, the church, we've been given the greatest opportunity to shine, to shine. Instead of waiting, sitting, talking to each other and waiting for the government to do something, the Lord said, wait a minute, you're the lie of the world. A city set on a hill can't be hid. Men don't light a candle and then put a bushel on top of it. No, they put it on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all that are in the house. He said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, not hear your good words. See your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. And that's what the Lord's wanting the church to do today. In our nation, in our world, the church needs to rise up and be, bring something brand new. Instead of four walls, instead of uh, that you got to do this to be a part of us, and these are the rituals, and these are the rules, and these are the regulations, and this is the way you got to dress, and this is what... No, no, no. Love God. Love people. Get it in our hearts. Get it the way that we're wanting, the, the way the Lord wants us to be doing it, and I think that's going to make a, a big, big difference. Uh, built, around, built around a statement for every, that every one of us needs to make, what does love require of me? What is it, Lord, every, every morning when I wake up? Lord, what do you require of me? If you're married, then the Lord wants, wants you to love that mate, your mate. If you've got children, he wants to love your, you, you to love your children. But beyond that, Lord, what, is it, what can I be doing in, in my world right now? See, what would, ha what would happen in our church, our city, our state, our nation, our, our world, if, if, everything, if everybody was going around with the idea of what does love require of me? I think it would make a difference. The first century church, you think about this now, the first century church after Jesus had left, he didn't leave them with buildings. They didn't have any buildings. They didn't have the Bible. The Old Testament, the Old Testament didn't even get, get codified till the year 180. The New Testament till the year 270. So the first century church didn't have anything, and yet they exploded in their world because they loved. This was all brand new. The pagans that were around, everyone that was around said, man, these folks are different. This is powerful, what's going on inside, inside their lives. And they were drawn, they were drawn into the church because of love. Because there was something of people who were loving God and loving people. Here's, here's what I want you to see. Here's the cross of Calvary. Here's the cross of Calvary. The Jewish religion came this way. And when it hit the cross of Calvary, a lot of things about the Jewish religion 
It just died. Ceremonial law died, okay? Dietary law died, no longer needed. Then here comes, here comes the, 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 the worship, the praise and worship. Well, King David had already given it to the Jewish nation. Here's, here's the way they were going to worship God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all is within me. Let's come before his presence with singing. Play, play those instruments. Sing with all your heart. He, and all those things stayed the same. But when love, when love, the way that we were going to love people around us, when it hit the cross, it went to a higher dimension. I'm going to tell you today that Christianity, even though we talk about, if I'm telling you four words of love God, love people, is simplified. It's a simple way of doing it. Yes, but it's more demanding. And you know why it's more demanding? Look, listen to what, listen to what the Lord says. You have heard that it was said of days of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. What did he do? He took murder, he took it to a different plane. Why? Because now love, what does love require of me? I've got to be doing the things that are right. And, and, and so he says, you have heard that it was said of, the, of old, you should not commit adultery. But I say to you that if you look on a woman to lust after her, you've already committed adultery with, your, with her in your heart. So again, this is, this is God saying, I'm giving you something brand new. I'm taking it to a higher level, a level that you've never seen before. And he's working in our hearts that way. I believe he's wanting us to understand that. See, when Jesus gave us the measuring stick, he hands us the measuring stick, and here's the way it is. And this is how I, I want to bring this down now to, to a way that we can process it properly. The vertical, my love for God, is measured by the way I love people around me. I don't, I don't ever, it's, it's easy for us to say, oh, I love God a lot more than I love people. Well, the Bible says you don't. The Bible says you don't. In fact, 1 John chapter 4, verse 20 says, if a man says he loves God but, but, but hates his brother, he's a liar. Sure, it's easy to say you love God who you've never seen, but here's your brother. You won't even love your brother out here? Love God. Love people. That's what the Lord is after. I, 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 I read these verses recently, and they got a hold of my heart. So here's the Lord, and he's saying, the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. You know why, why the Lord would say, Do you know why you get to get, get into heaven? And they'll say to him, well, Why? Well, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked, you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. And they, they were looking at one another saying, Did you know, ever know the Lord was hungry? Hey, was he in prison? I don't remember doing all those things. What, what's that all about? Here's what the Lord said. The king will answer, Surely I say to you, inasmuch as you did these to the least of my brethren that are around me, when you did it to them, you did it to me. I want the Lord to give us a paradigm shift. I don't care what religion you are. I hope you lose your religion. We talked about that last Sunday. Lose your religion. And get a fresh New way of going after God that we can love people, people that we should be, be loving on, and the Lord doing some things inside us. Corona, the, this, this new virus, this coronavirus 2002, 20, 2020, has, it's, it's fear that's exposing how fragile our world is right now. Our economy is fragile. Here we are one week. We're, we're thinking about retirement, and we're building up our 401K, and the next week we're driving over, all over town trying to find toilet paper. What is that? You know, how fragile our government is. You know, we, we, we've trusted in government to do so many things for us, but look at what's happened as government. And I'm not taking anything away from what they're trying to do for us. I'm just saying our government's fragile. It can't do everything for us. I'm saying to you that even, even with Christianity, many of you have been following Christ for years, and now this thing comes and fear comes on us. Why should fear be on us? Wait a minute. Uh -uh, God's not giving us a spirit of fear. I bind the spirit of fear right now in Jesus' name. I take authority over that. No, uh-uh. We don't live under fear. He's given us the power of love, power, love, and a sound mind, and that's what we all should have. I want to pray for you this morning I, because I believe that there is no fear in love, that perfect love casts out all fear. Let me, uh, let me tell you this. That, that virus, it's not nothing, but it isn't everything. It is something, but you need someone. 
I want you to have someone inside your life because when you have someone, it makes all the difference in the world. Our prayers right now for you, and we, we're praying for our world. We're saying, Jesus, do something in our world. Do you know what a boomerang prayer is? A boomerang prayer is when we throw it out this way and that thing goes all the way up and then you hear the Lord saying, yeah, and what are you going to do? Because you're my body. When we pray for the Lord to heal our, our land and to pray, pray for the Lord to do good things in our nation, you know what we find out? Since we're his body, he's saying, okay, what are you going to do? So what are you going to do this coming week? Something new. Let brand new love cause you to do something that you've never done before. Make a difference. I mean, make, intentionally do something that you've never done before. And it'll change your heart. That's what called brand new is all about. That's what the, that is what the paradigm shift is all about. Let me pray for you. Can I pray for you this morning? Because I want the Lord to touch us here today. George, we, Jesus, we know you as, as beyond, being omnipotent. That means you have all the power. We know you as, we know as, uh, you as being omniscient. You know all things. Lord God, you, you're omnipresent. You're everywhere. But Lord, in, in the midst of all that you are, I'm asking, Lord, that you help us spark something inside of every one of us to understand that we are your body. And that when we're praying for you to heal this land, God, we're actually praying for us to get off the couch and do something in, in your name. And so, uh, Lord, I'm, I'm praying that over everybody that's watching us right now. I'm praying, Lord God, every man, woman, and young person here, within the, within the constraints of what the law is telling us to do, we're not, we don't want to violate law, Lord. Every soul needs to be subject to the higher powers, and we understand that. But at the same time, God, you put your church on this earth for a reason. And, Lord, we're alive in you, Jesus, and we have the hope in you. And we have people that we love, people that we know that are maybe sitting in on couches right now, and, and they're just scared to death. They don't know what's going to happen because the, the government hasn't given us clearance yet. We don't know what's going to take place. But, Lord, all things are in your hands and we're in your hands, and we're asking you to send us forth in glory and in power, Lord, boldly and confidently, Jesus, that we can take you, Lord, to this world. We may be the only Jesus our world's ever going to see. We may be the only Bible that our world's ever going to read. We may be the only lifeline to somebody's salvation. God, help us to understand that. God, do a paradigm shift inside our minds, Lord, that touches our hearts, that breaks our hearts, that gets into the very depth, core being of our, of, our, of, our, of our hearts, Lord Jesus, that we can be what you want us to be in this life. Lord Jesus, you're good to us. You're good to us, and you've been good to us, Lord. And Lord Jesus, we want, we want to love on people around us, Lord God. We want to love above, them above their fallacies and above all their faults the same way you did us. Lord, you look beyond who we were to reach arms of love around us and draw us by your Spirit. We want to do the same thing. God, we have friends. We have neighbors, Jesus. We have co-workers. We have lost people all around us, Jesus, and they need you. Now help us, Lord, to be that lifeline. Help us to do such a paradigm shift inside our minds, God, that we'll, we'll understand what love, brand new love, is all about. You want us to love this world, Jesus, because in doing so, Lord, we show you how much we really love you. Lord God, Jesus, you came to this earth, died on a cross, paid the price, did for us what we could not do for ourselves. And we stand as grateful people, your church, alive on this earth, ready to do all that you want us to do. Help us right now in the name of Jesus. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday. Same time, same station. Tell somebody about it. Gather some people together. We want to see you. We want to worship with you. God bless you. We love you.